this is Nyema song and their Tati anniversary. This is our family's motto. This is our prayer and everything for every day. Itu pun ada. Tapi rumah sikit kotor. Apa apa apa. Saya pada ha pili jua saya poka itu ha poka punya ada itu ha sudah poka saya jua ini baca ka betul ini orang buang punya you ambil ambil saya jua makanlah bulan-bulan dapat berapa saya bulan 5 5 detik ada 3 detik ada ini baca sudah lama tinggal sini saya lama itu dua orang 2000 masuk saya 2000 2000 masuk 2006 6 bulan 6 tahun saya umur 28. 28. Itu buka ada 28. I work here once a week. In one day, it takes three hours. Uh, in Nyema, I go to school. We learn mathematics, science, English, and um, Nyema language. I came to Malaysia 2002. Why? Uh, I face, I see a lot of problems in my country. The military government so I see problem and then I come here I run my country at home he play guitar and study Bible or study the schooling the any book and watching TV the American funny American job for me very difficult for send to school our refugee status so cannot go to government school. Then another thing is I uh, can join the um, other home school, home school or the tuition language. But for me, very expensive. No and my family, so cannot send. <laughs> yes. So now he skip school about one and a half years. So he also went to go to school because he needs education. I love school very much because I have a lot of friends there. In Yama, uh, a lot of children don't went to school, but I do. I went to school. Sometimes I feel lonely, but some, most of the time, I know that I am with Jesus. I cannot do myself also. I will, um, my husband also very difficult. Two, two years, I uh, cannot work. He, TB, TB problem, lunch problem, so rest at home. So now we pray to God. Um, who is come and uh, help him? We don't know yet.
Bahasa Malaysia semua ada Bahasa tak? Malaysia ada, barang aram putih ada, dan bahasa di Arabi ada, ada agama. Kita sangat mengharapkan kalau kerajaan Malaysia itu maulah membantu bagi kita refugi untuk boleh uh, buat pendidikan di sini kan, boleh sambung pendidikan. Pencarian sikit dekat Pasar Borong, kalau ada pun 30, kalau tak 15 ringgit. Kami bayar rumah mahal 300, itulah makan lagi. Di sekolah, di kampung kita cari uang tak boleh. Anak-anak sekolah tak boleh pasal sekolah dah dibakar lah dan sebagainya kan. Jadi nak balik kampung pun sekarang susah. Sebagian dia memang tak sanggup fikir daripada anaknya tak ada sekolah kan. Lebih baik dia balik kampung dekat sana walaupun menegangkan, cemaskan hati mereka. Ya, namun anak-anak mesti sekolah. Itulah. Kita di sini pelarian bukan pelarian ekonomi. Semua orang dah tahu Aceh itu konflik dari sejak tahun-tahun kemarin-kemarin itu kan. Yang bayi umur 10 hari pun dipakar hidup-hidup. Seperti dah buat anjing ayam bakar lah. Pasal ayahnya tak dapat. Jadi kita tak berani balik kampung. Sudah berulang-ulang Aceh dikatakan aman, waktu jeda pun dikatakan aman, kita balik ke kampung. Tapi tidak sampai kampung, masih juga seperti ini. Memang nak cerita pasal latar belakang dekat Aceh, tak boleh cerita lah. Saya sedih. Kekejaman yang terjadi di Aceh mungkin sama seperti yang terjadi di Irak. For some time, uh, the students were arrested when they were going to the school. 
they will they will report to uh, like the police or uh, Rela and we will take uh, operation like that. We so sometimes we tell them the children not to read the lesson very loud because <laughs> the our neck will you know, and we will complain. <laughs> Two weeks ago, operation took place in this around this place. So fortunately, we we get uh, information from our friends. So we then we do not allow the children to go out. So they have waited the operation finish. So. <laughs> Well, they face a lot of uncertainties. Uh, among others, I think the main concern would be the possibility of being arrested by either the immigration officers or the police officers or even the rela officers because of their status, which are not being clearly recognized by the Malaysian government. They constantly face the fear of prosecution by the authorities. Uh, lest we forget, Malaysia is also a party to the Child Convention. Uh, under the Child Convention or Conventions on the Right of the Child, Article 22 in particular says that every state member must give protection to refugee children and asylum seeking children. In Malaysia, we have ratified the Convention and we have withdrawn our reservation in relation to Article 22 of the Child Convention. So, as far as the international community is concerned, Malaysia has made a declaration, an announcement that they will look into the plights of refugee children. They will give protection to refugee children. They will give assistance to refugee children. But in reality, again, I mean, this is where we do not see any concrete action or measures being taken by the government. It's high time for the government to walk the talk. In Yama, I about five o'clock. I have to spend no five hours. I have to spend in school, and after that, we have sports. I mean on our own so we play football after that take bed and we memorize or study on our school books and after that we sleep at nine o'clock importance of education uh, is very well established as and it is more so important for the refugee children because children will not uh, have a future or a hope if they grow up to be people who are illiterate. Being literate actually gives them uh, ability to understand information and uh, to, to have the understanding to be able to make better decisions. And of course, it gives them uh, education and power people because when you understand and when you can comprehend, it gives you uh, the confidence and self-esteem as a people group. And of course, uh, coming together uh, to go to school every day is a normalcy that every child needs, um, especially when they are on the run or especially they are in a foreign country. You are afraid of them! Your friends are good! See, we passion now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, you fellas are good. And man again, and Tadio, he doesn't sit and tea, 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 out. He's not gonna take like that. Fight for the ball. Fight for the ball. Don't let them take the ball and run away with it. Take the ball from them.
during my uh, visit to Sabah, I only saw one learning center, which I thought very, very dynamic, though it has its own uh, problems. But on the whole, it's a very, very proactive kind of learning center because for one, it doesn't give any demarcation, whether a document or not. So children go there because they want to learn. They want to know how to read. They want to know how to write. And of course, they want to know how to sing songs uh, that you know the whole community want to sing. The space is not really the problem, you know, because wherever we are, even in a very small corner of uh, a place, if there is the determination and the commitment of one party or both or the concerned stakeholders to teach the children so that they will learn something very basic in their lives, then I think. Uh, this, this kind of setup is, is really worth uh, looking at. It seems that the state is very, very supportive of the, of the move. And of course they should be supportive because it should have been the responsibility and now it's somebody else's responsibility. So in a way, this group is helping the government, uh, helping the state to, to come up with a more or less an organized you know, a structure or a model that could be uh, that other states or other parts of Malaysia could, could pattern and could, could, uh, could develop as well. Or there's a, a, a trace, a, something like a tracer study, you know, where do these children are now? And some of them are, uh, have worked as, as clerks, and some, uh, some noble, noble uh, jobs somewhere around the, the state. I would suggest two viable uh, solutions. First of all, of course, is to integrate the refugee children into the local system. Uh, second, solution I would propose is actually a parallel, parallel school or an alternative education uh, system that is provided for um, refugee or asylum seekers. So um, the government could grant um, consent for NGO or other service provider to operate the school and also recognize their attainment. For example, allow them to sit for UPSR or allow them to sit for PMR so that uh, whatever they have attained, achieved in, uh, during uh, their time here could uh, bring them further. Without proper access to education, it's a vicious circle. We have to look in the long term. If Malaysia is not willing to accept these people as part of our community and they want these people to be sent to a third country as soon as possible, Malaysia has to do something. They have to give proper education to the children because we must bear in mind that not all third countries uh, who are willing to accept refugees will accept those without education. Ada mau jadi apa bila besar? Orang baik. Huh? Mau jadi doktor? Okay. As I see, those who go to school are more kindly, more gentle, and also for my future, it depends on that I... I think of you lying in the dark, waiting for the next blow to fall. While outside we live our lives without a thought No more of this As the bright light turns to grey No more of this And another one slips away How are you 
to know to whom you can turn when the very ones who brought you into this world chip away this world chip